Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I got to show you what came in the mail today because it is the inspiration for today's card making extravaganza. Here we go. I took it out of the bag uh, that it came in. I didn't actually realize all these things would arrive together. Uh, this isn't, doesn't have anything to do with it, but I just needed a um, new pair of pliers. I had uh, two of these. My daughter took them to college with her. I usually use two, but I do have another pair that are, is, doesn't have the cutters on it. Anyway, just these little cousin um, three-in-one pliers. These are It's so good to have a pair of three-in-one pliers. And I just like these. I used to sell them at Walmart. I don't know if they still do or not, but six bucks on Amazon doesn't have anything to do with this video. What does have something to do with this video are these guys and when I opened up the package these were in it. The New Art Nouveau Kuretake Gansai Tambi paints and when I saw them together just pulling out of the package like this, first of all this made me deliriously happy because I love to sort things so I get to put everything back in its order. <laughs> original place. I know it's ridiculous. Some people would be horrified when I'm like, oh, I get to sort them. But the colors all jumbled together with the colors of these uh, little booklets of stickers. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm using all of this today. So let's take a look here. Um, these, this was $12 or $11.99 and it's seven booklets of vintage fashion stickers. And I'm going to use my scissors to get into this. So look, you got a little bonus haul with your card making extravaganza. Well, at least, at least there'll be one thing in the video that's not like impossible to find and discontinued because usually when I make cards, I'm using like stuff that's super old because honestly, I have what I like and I rarely buy new card making stuff because I love the stamps that I already have and the papers I already have. And honestly, I usually make a lot of my own papers. So I'm just going to move the paints out of there. Wait for a minute. So let's see. Ah, so cute. So there are so this, oh, they came with some tweezers. That's nice. That must be for sticker placement. Fine tweezer. I did not expect that, but heh, free tweezers. Can't go wrong. All right, let's take a look. Um, I spotted these on Amazon and I just thought they would be super cute for the type of cards that I like to make. I kind of wish they weren't all taped together though because the artwork on the front is so cute. You know what I'm going to do? This is my tip. When you need to remove adhesive, I was just telling this to my daughter because she just bought some um, textbooks and she bought them used and they came with the stickers on them. When you have stickers you need to remove, use a heat tool and it makes them peel off a lot easier. So you know what? I'm going to do that off camera. I'll be back in a second. We'll look at all these beauties and they're a glory. I am pleased to report that there was no adhesive residue on the fronts here of these packages and on the other four the adhesive was on the back so it didn't really matter. But I had a brainstorm. I think I might use these packaging in my cards. So let's take a look. I'm just going to snip. I actually don't even need to cut the ribbon because the uh, adhesive to open these up are on the bottom. Guys, skip ahead if you just want to get right to the card making. But I want to show you these because you might be curious about them. So, you know what? Let's zoom in. I wonder if they're the same like outfits, just different colors or what? So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see them. These are the white ones, probably not the best ones show on camera. It looks like we get two of each lady. Oh, I'm not sure why they, why they're showing as maybe it's black and white. There really wasn't a good good uh, picture of all of the fashions, I don't think. I just had like an overall. They're small though. Look, they're about three inches by one inch. They would be good on cute little like microscope glass slides. They do have the white around them, so um, that might be a deal breaker for some of you. I'm not sure if I love it, but it seems to me if I have them all like that, you know what? Well, when I cut stuff with a scan and cut, I often will cut it with the white. So, I'm not going to be bothered by it. You can choose how you react, guys. You can embrace it, or you can... I really like this pose. I think it's really cute. Um, you know, you can choose how you react. Maybe I'll send some stickers with my Galentine's cards. Because I'll probably be sending these mostly to crafty friends who would probably enjoy some of those stickers. Okay, so they're small. But that might make them a little bit more useful for different things. Um, I love to do bookmarks in cards and like include little bookmarks so that way there's something practical with it. Can we get one of those? 
probably it's probably behind one of these other ones or maybe I know it's yes yeah, right there so that's what's in the black and white one I noticed that there were a lot of sellers selling these on um, on Amazon yeah I think I'm just gonna put these I might just put them in like a bin so I can flip through them because it's like I'm not putting these back in the package who are we kidding who are we kidding let's do the red one because red's my favorite color I'll zoom up just a little bit more uh, yeah, I'm not putting them back in that tiny little package. You kidding me? You gotta be kidding me. I'm not doing that. Life's too short. Ooh, that's cute. I love the packaging. The packaging is really sweet. That's definitely gonna work its way into a card. And I'm not gonna hoard it. I'm gonna use it. These are really cute. They're really cute. They're small. They remind me of like Mary Tyler Moore and like the ladies on the patterns. I have a thing for vintage patterns, which you're gonna see because I made our background paper. We're gonna use... Um, Vintage pattern pieces for our background paper, you'll see in a minute. Interesting. It looks like they almost like shifted the color. Like this whole lady looks a little red. They're definitely like kind of, I would say, 50s, maybe 60s. Maybe they're a little different. Maybe it's a different decade each time. Oops, that lady's sticking behind here. They're cute though. Oh, I love this one. I love the three ladies. That's really cute. So, um, I don't need to see all of these. That's probably, probably going to get pretty repetitive. I haven't noticed if it's the same people. I don't think it is. I think it's different, different people. Let's do the green one. Oh, you know what? It would be fun to do like, uh, I wonder if you could do Christmas. I bet you could. Imagine you had a Christmas like die cut and you stuck the, like the people with their red dresses around the Christmas tree die cut. That would be cute. Look at that. We're already coming up with all kinds of ways we're going to use this. How many of you guys bought this when I told you about it? <laughs> Was it in Sat Chat? I think I told you guys in Sat Chat over the Valentine's. How many of you guys bought these? So write them down. Write down the ideas right now. And stick them in the little bin where you keep your stickers. Put them all together so you don't forget your idea. You'll thank me later. These actually, wouldn't that be cute on a St. Patrick's Day card if you do St. Patrick's Day? I think I want to do St. Patrick's Day. I actually am partially Irish. My father's side of the family is Irish. Like, several generations ago. Most of, most of my people came here via Canada. <laughs> but before Canada! <laughs> oh, that's a sweet one. They're all really cute. These would all be so sweet on, maybe I have to do a St. Patrick's Day card extravaganza. See, I don't like this though, because this poor woman these poor ladies look like they're seasick. It's like they shifted the whole thing green on that one. Oh, have some drama mean ladies. Oh, these ladies. Looks like it's summer. Gonna go to the, go have lunch and maybe play a little tennis at the country club. Yep, I like that. I've never been to a country club in my life, but I like the idea. I'd like to go play tennis. I'd like it to be summer. Those are cute. Oh, and we got a trio of ladies. I love the trio of ladies. What does our other trio of ladies look like? I'm trying to... Can I find the trio? Hmm. No, I'm never going to be able to find it. I've already got this in such a jumble. So I can't remember the other... Oh, here's our other trio of ladies. Is it the same? Well, it might be the same trio, but they're in different clothes and different poses. So I like the trios. The trios are going to be my faves. Someone needs to come out with a set of all the colors, but just the trios. Because then it's totally like, you know, you're planning your girlfriend getaway. You're all going to go to a stamp convention. That's me and my my friends. I make stamp convention cards for my friends. Actually, I supposed to make them a goodie bag, and I have my friends Cindy and Tracy do that. They make us goodie bags. I'm not that uh, thoughtful. <laughs> I'm an awful friend. I'm trying to be better, though. Sending cards. Give me a break. Uh, then we got these two fancy ladies. Those are cute. They're like little paper dolls. Maybe that's why I like them so much. They remind me of little paper dolls. So cute. Oh, look at the little night Are they nighties? Oh, I don't know, but they're cute. Oh, that calico print. Is that like... I know it's like these are like vintage, but boy, doesn't that remind me of the 80s, the fabric that was popular in the 80s? 
I love that 50s style. I think that women's clothing in the 50s was the most flattering. Like the, the um, fitted bodice, empire waist. Even if you don't have a fitted bodice, if you, empire waist is so flattering, I think. I just love that silhouette. I think it's so classic. Love it. I wish it was more practical. Oh my gosh, how cute is that? Look at that cute little, that cute little sleep set. Oh, adorable. Okay, Valentine's are pink, I should say. But they're not like all that color, I think, because I was wondering, because there were some different sellers at different sets for different amounts of money on Amazon, and they didn't all have all the colors. Some had, you know, three of the colors, and they might be with other sticker packs and stuff. So, I mean, at least you should be able to find these. You know, if they sell out from the place I got it with the seven packs. I, I wanted all the colors because... I, my eyes are bigger than my, my, my crafting wants are bigger than my reality of how much I can actually craft. Oh, look at this one. This is almost like Belle of the Ball here. You're doing a fancy party. You're gonna, gonna invite all your friends to a ball. <laughs> so you gotta have your invitations of the ball gown. You got more of our classic summertime dresses. I like those of this fancy lady. She's got a scarf. <laughs> that's almost looks like a little flapper haircut, but most of these definitely seem to be mid-century. I'd love that. That is a sweet little dress that is. Like hanging up her, hanging up her laundry. I love this. A good combination of like chic and like that could be a wedding or anniversary or something. And then there's like, you know, almost stuff that looks like, <clears throat> I don't know, almost like nightgowns. And you got, you know, just friendship. I mean, I just love this sort of thing. It's probably going to be way too many people stickers for a lot of people's uses, but I think they're really sweet. I love these ones that look like pajamas. <laughs> Pajama party invitation. Have you, you know, sometimes you do those scrapbooking crops where like they're um, at like hotel or something and you get a PJ party. Sometimes when we go to the stamp show, we all like go down to the breakfast nook to craft with friends that we meet there, <clears throat> that we knew that we just kind of like meet up with. And we're all in our jimmies. It's fun. Bonding. Cute. Is there no trio in this one? I don't think there's a trio in the blue section. That's too bad. I like the trios. What do we have? One more? Wait a minute. We have two more. Oh, you know what? The first one I looked at wasn't white. It was black. I was thinking that was the white section. It was a um, more black outfit. So we still have the white one. We still have the yellow one. Is it yellow or cream? I'm not sure. But by golly, I'm gonna show them to you. Tech with the algorithm. <laughs> well, this is gonna be a long video, guys. I hope you hope you're comfortable. Hopefully you have your supplies out and you're shuffling through them too. Maybe did you get some of these? Are you going through them with me? Oh, we got a trio right off the top. We got a trio. Oh, it's wedding! <gasps> guys, we use are these really stickers? That's another thing. I'm not entirely sure these are stickers. <laughs> Let's see. They are. They are stickers. Oh, they're vellum, guys. <gasps> Doesn't matter if there's an edge because they're vellum. The edge won't be very very prominent. They're washi or washi tape stickers. That's neat. I didn't realize that when I bought them. I just thought they were cool. So there you go. That's not. That's gonna be great, guys, because you're gonna stick it on a piece of pattern paper and it's gonna be like all integrated. Look at this fancy bride. She's got a veil on. <laughs> I thought it kind of looked like an umbrella. It's a veil. Oh, uh, look at that little cocktail dress. Yeah, this is definitely, this is where you're going to find all your bride making card needs. Well, maybe not. That's some sassy 70s ladies. I don't know what they're up to. Something fun, probably. That's a white gloved 50s housewife. This is a, look like a 70s hippie bride or nightgown, I'm not sure. Oh, that's a classic bride. Look at that classic bride. Oh, a couple classic brides. That's more of a mid-century classic bride. This is more of like a, I don't know, like a fancy, fancy poofy skirt bride. That's just a cute little 60s mini skirt outfit. Very cute. I also love that style too. When I was a teenager, my mom still had some dresses like that in a closet upstairs. And boy, did I sneak those out of the house and wear them to school. You better believe it. 
I figured how much trouble am I going to get into wearing these outfits if they belong to my mother. We had a dress code in high school though, and your fingertips were supposed to touch you. Like if you had your hands down straight, your fingertips, your hemline should have, be at least as long as your fingertips. I avoided the principal on the days I wore the mini skirt dresses. Very classic. I love that. Very cute. It's like a Brady Bunch. It's like a Jan Brady or something outfit. And oh, look at that. Nice. Another classic, classic wedding gown. Very, very elegant. I like that. And last but not least, three years into this video, we're going to look at the tan ones. Boy, my backgrounds are going to be dry by the time I'm done this. I'll have to show you the backgrounds. They're sitting next to me. Uh, the Mod Podge is kind of stinking up the place, but they're they're drying as we speak. But maybe they'll be dry by the time I'm done showing you all these stickers. So we've got some... Let's move those out of the way. We've got some... I don't think this one I'm going to be too crazy about, although <clears throat> these colors are certainly 70s. We've got our tablecloth dress. Another fine drapes pattern on this dress. That's what you gotta love about the 70s. Your fabric was all purpose. You could make curtains with them. You could upholster your fabric, your, your furniture with them. You could make a dress out of them. You could make a tablecloth. I mean, the, the prints just, they didn't end. They didn't end with the drapes. They were all purpose. Like that Carol Burnett skit where she comes down wearing the curtain. And she said I saw it in the window and I just had to have it. Good stuff, Miss Carol Burnett. That, well, I think she's still alive, but that show, that show was good. That's good stuff. It's still funny. You watch Carol Burnett show, it's still funny. This is what, these all remind me of the Carol Burnett show for some reason. Oh, there's a, there's a, what, another wedding dress. Oh, I like this one. Oh, that's the one that's on the cover. It's so coy, looking over her shoulder. Hello, fellas. I'm going to the supermarket gonna collect my glasses. With the, remember that? Well, I don't remember that actually. I've heard about it where you, the supermarkets would give like um, coupons or something and then when you collected a bunch you could go trade them in for like glasses. Oh, it's a cute nightgown. I love the little nighties. They're so adorable. Um, that's what that reminds me of. When I think of days of old day, not that old day, <laughs> the 60s. Uh, cute. I love little rompers. That's adorable. I'd wear that. Okay. Actually, I'd wear all these clothes. Who am we kidding? Even the ones look like they were made out of drapes. I'd wear them. I'm not picky. But actually, I do love the uh, I love the older clothes. Okay, so there. We've seen our stickers. Now let's dig into our our beautiful our beautiful watercolor set. It's all a jumble. I'm going to zoom out a little bit for this. Oh, I have one of these since they were released last year. And I put them on my um, Christmas wish list because I have like an Amazon wish list that I share with my husband to like we need some ideas. I put some ideas in there, and I put these in there, but the uh, but they they were sold out like right straight away. They they were released. I put them on my list, and they were sold out. And then I was kind of worried that he might buy because you know sometimes they replace things on Amazon with current with with other products when something sells out. And they had like the original set of twenty four, and I was kind of afraid that he might purchase those for me. But luckily he didn't because I already had the set of twenty four. I had those for, like from years ago, and they're they're pretty used up but I did treat myself after Inktober a couple like last year to the set of um this is not the order they're going in but I'm just gonna put them in here and organize them later um but I did treat myself to the set of 48 thinking ah I've got every every color they make now look at me except for the metallics which I have similar ones in other brands so I didn't really need those um and then they came out with the 100 set in a gorgeous box but I am but it's expensive and I'm totally um I'm totally resisting for now but look at that. Now, this is not the way they go. They'll be more aesthetically pleasing when I put them in that way. But um, Japanese traditional paint for professional artists and crafters. It can be used as a gouache and watered down for use as a watercolor. Idea for, ideal for sketch, illustration, card making, and more. And we're going to use these for making cards today. And I just, I'll probably, um, you know what? It says what the colors, where the colors should go. And the um, pale pink number F22. Is that right? 18. So I'll need to go through and put these where they go. And actually, I don't need to. It doesn't matter. You can use them however you want. You can put them in your own arrangement. But I'm going to put them the way they're supposed to go. And uh, this is the lid. There's a little swatch in the lid. And that's how it's stored. But they, they put it the other way, so it's pretty in the packaging. However, when it comes from Amazon, they might as well just close the box up because stuff does not arrive in the way that it was sent. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to put these in order. And then uh, I'm going to swatch them out 
And oh, I'll show you the backgrounds that I've started here. Let me get that out of the way. So um, in the other room, I'm just going to show you. I don't know if, how much that's going to show on camera, but I took some 12 inch by 18 inch drawing paper and I decoupaged with some matte Mod Podge uh, a bunch of pattern pieces on top of the um, on top of the drawing paper and then I uh, just kind of crinkled it up and stuff because I wanted some interesting texture and then I watered down some gesso and just brushed the gesso on top so that is all drying right now and then I'm going to trim it down to um, panels to go on my 5x7 cards and these are the craft I had like 10 sheets of cardstock left of this uh, of this type which is perfect. I do have another batch of craft card stock to break into, but I want to use this up. This is the one from Joanne's. I prefer the one from Michael's because it's a little bit smoother, but you're only really going to see the edge of it. Uh, and a tip, because this is really thick stuff and it's it doesn't want to go flat. After I scored it with my score pal and flattened it with my bone folder, I stacked these up and put them through my die cut machine, to my, my manual die cut machine, and that really helped them sit flat. And then I just got some envelopes from paper, from uh, Mr. Pen that I'm going to use. Those are also from Amazon, pretty affordable. All right, so uh, let me get myself situated and we'll be back. Actually, you want to swatch them out together on camera? Well, you can skip ahead if you don't. Um, I put these in order. Don't they look nicer in order? I think so. So the first color is saffron yellow. Very pretty. I mean, I don't know. Do you even care about this? Uh, green gold and of course this is not watercolor paper I'll do a proper review of these this is not it I don't like this paper that they give you to swatch on I mean it's it's fine because you get a an idea but you know what these are semi opaque so you really can see what they look like on the um, on the pans themselves so the difference between these and gouache though is gouache dries to a matte finish and these dry to a if you use them thickly like light gouache you're going to get more of a glossy finish to them so fyi oh actually though you know what this will actually be pretty good because the surface we're going to paint these on have been mod podged and gessoed so it's going to be more like it's not going to be as absorbent as a watercolor paper so this will probably work out but i don't think i'm getting my best the best, uh, ooh, that's pretty, that's a pretty color. Um, I don't think I'm eating the best reaction here. And you don't need these paints to do this project. You actually don't need anything that I'm using to do this project. You can use whatever supplies you have on hand. Uh, you could probably find pictures online of vintage pattern people that you could print out. I mean, I'm sure it's probably public domain. I'm sure that's why there's, you know, why these stickers exist. I don't know if it'd be public, would it be public domain from the 50s? Maybe. I can't remember, what is it, 75 years for copyright? I think it's 75 years after the artist's death though, so. Very soft and subtle, but this is gonna be perfect for this project. All right, there we go. We've got a little swatchy swatch there. Um, oh, another thing that I want to use, I'm just gonna set this aside for right now. While that dries, are vintage stamps. So um, since we're just going through stuff, you don't have to watch this if you're just waiting for the, the uh, tutorial, but if you are curious, um, I was looking through my background stamps. I have these two vintage stamps. I'm not sure if I'll use these because they are pretty big, but I've got them. I might, um, if the background feels like it needs a little something extra. This is my vintage stamp binder. So if you've ever seen my binders in the room of Horde, they're full of stamps. And um, I thought you might want to see what my vintage stamp, uh, vintage sewing stamp collection looks like because I've collected these for years. It's one of my favorite genres. Um, I have probably six subgenres of vintage, vintage, um, stamps. I have like vintage storybook, vintage art supplies. Um, it's, it's, it's a genre I really like. So we can look at this. I mean, I don't know how much you'll be able to see for rubber stamping, but uh, I've got these. Stamp it up. Little, uh, whatchamacallit, lace doily trims. I've got just a general, I don't know where this, I think I probably cut this apart from another set. I cut my sets apart and put them in the binder they go to. This is one I picked up at a stamp show. It's just like a little doily edge. It kind of looks like that. 
Um, I've got some floss cards, which actually, you've probably seen my, um, this one right here is really neat because I, I actually cut these out and wrapped Baker's Twine around them. And then I couple, got a couple other little vintage, they look like little button cards. Um, needle and thread, doilies, measuring tape. It's kind of hard to see with the rubber stamps what they are exactly. <clears throat> this was an old Stampin' Up! set. Oh, actually, I have the, uh, I have the indexes for those. I took them all out of their DVD cases. Um, so that's those two. Aren't they adorable? They're kind of cutesy. Not not so much vintage, more cutesy, but I keep all the sewing supplies together whether they're vintage or not. Do you remember Crafty Secrets? Their stamps were the best. Look at this set. Isn't that gorgeous? This one, I might use, I might just take the stamp set out right here because I think this is going to be the one because what's more Galentine's than this one right here? It's got, it's got a trio of pattern people. It's got girlfriend, it's got um, like a quilt, a friend will warm your body and comfort your soul. Um, hem your blessings with thanks. Thank you for my hand to your heart. You're so special, life's a stitch. So yeah, this is perfect. This is perfect for today's project. I could stop right there, but I'll show you the rest of my collection. I'm gonna keep those out because I think those are what I'll use. Um, this stamp pen is recently, they didn't really go out of business, but they've, um, They've kind of closed their warehouse. The owner has kind of moved stuff, some stuff back to her house. They've given up their licenses on like House Mouse, and I don't know. I think they're restructuring, but I don't know if they're maybe they'll come back. I'm not sure. Um, Inky Dinky Doo is also out of business, but I love the simplicity pattern line that they had a few years ago. What year was this from? Oh, I don't see it. Oh, that's too bad. 2019. 2019. So it's re they recently went out of business. This was one from Ranger from Dina Weekly. She had some big people, but they were really big, like almost not very useful. Um, this is much more suitable for card makers. And these were three different sets. So I like that they were smaller and put in one set for card making. I don't know, 2013. So you can see guys, I don't get rid of my stamps when they discontinue. This is another company that went out of business, but their stamps were so gorgeous and so high quality. Pink Persimmon, these two style girls. I love these stamps. Um, I don't know if I can show you. This might be stuck to the packaging. Yeah, it's stuck to the packaging, but hello, vintage girl. Action set. And I like your style, girl. Yeah, I stuck because I laminated the packaging and stuck them to the packaging, but those are really great pattern lady stamps, too. So now I've got the small scale from the stickers, and I've got the big scale from my stamps there. Another thing I really love from Pink Persimmon was the buttons, and I have a video on making my own paper buttons with these. Thick card, like by stacking, and uh, they came out great, I think. We'll probably use some of those. I still have some of those in a drawer. Um, then I've got some inchies. Some of those are really cute for making a little like post stamp. So maybe I'll use my dies from the, from my Paper Craft Society set that I designed last year and make some little posters, poster stamps like that. I'm getting so excited. Uh, you know what? Why don't I just pull those up? I think I do want to use those. Set those over in the stack. Um, some more buttons, uh, vin paper tray ink vintage buttons, some more trims. Those came on wooden blocks, but they were really hard to line up, so I pulled them off the blocks because they were more useful. But I usually don't do that. Um, these, I don't know where that came. I think they might have come in like a um, in like a magazine kit. There's some more little button card things from paper tray ink. These are from the CDs company, uh, Ink Boutique. Then they turned into Ink Boutique. They were they're out of business. That was Martha Stewart Crafts, I think, from EK Success, which is also out of business. Um, those, I can't remember who those were from. I think it might have been the Paper Studio. I think they're from Joanne. And some more buttons. I think those are Inky Dinky Do, but I'm not 100% sure. But aren't they great? Um, the Darkroom Door had a couple cute stamp, like photorealistic stamps there. I use those in a video. Um, so, and I use this in a video. That's on my YouTube channel if you want to find it. Just look up Darkroom Door sewing stamps or I don't know. It was a Top Flight stamp sponsor video. I remember that. These were, I believe, Oriental Trading Company. All, um, well, that's a better look at them. All trims and laces and stuff. And these are the paper company. Uh, studios, the Paper Company Studios. Those were from Joann's, and they're all just sewing themed. And some more Paper Company Studios. These were great because they're actual red rubber on cling cushion, and they were like, I don't know, less than 10 bucks for a set. Aren't they wonderful? And then these doilies, I don't remember. They look like they might have been Martha Stewart Crafts or Inkitty Kadoo or maybe Michael's, um, their house brand. 
But um, yeah, I don't think I have a single thing in here that's still available <laughs> to purchase. The Darkroom Door probably is. And this, uh, these buttons are from Darkroom Door. And the, the pattern pieces from Technique Tuesday are. But the other ones are all discontinued. But you know what? You might be able to find them on eBay or Etsy. Or maybe you have them in your stash because you're awesome. Uh, you're awesome regardless if you have those stamps or not. So I'm, I've got myself fair, fairly well organized. I gotta wait for those backgrounds to dry. Um, and yeah, I've gotta, gotta, gotta organize my mind here, which I will do. I'm gonna stamp some of these. Uh, I just love these uh, fancy 50s ladies. So I'm gonna stamp a bunch of these. I got four of this design. I'm gonna do four of this design. And then I've got another one that actually has like paper doll clothes, which I'll probably stamp on some, um, I'll probably stamp the body on this. Uh, this is 90 pound watercolor paper, Fabriano Studio. Very affordable. Um, I, I'm using the 90 pound because I like the, um, I, it's easier to cut in the scanning cut machine versus the 140 pound, and I will be using my scanning cut to cut this out. I got a little bit of extra ink on my block. This is actually one of those um, magnetic picture frames, but I find if I have really detailed stamps, it's they're really nice because you can really press where you need the extra the ex extra pressing really well. Look at that image, man. These are from Pink Persimmon. Um, I wish that company was still in business. Oh, their stamps, they were all just so beautiful. And I have to say that I still have all my Pink Persimmon stamps, and every single one is still as like stylish and nothing looks dated to me. Everything looks just so chic. I'll bring that up to the camera so you can see it. But I mean, look, look at the detail in the, isn't that gorgeous? And this is the other one. I mean, any, any chance, any excuse I get to use those stamps, I do. So I do apologize that they're no longer available, but you know, maybe you find some like vintage pattern artwork online, like the, the pattern people, like Simplicity Vintage Patterns, something like that, vintage clip art of fashion ladies um, that you can use on your artwork. The other thing I wanted to do, was use this stamp set, another great stamp set. This is by um, Nat Callback designed this. She does, um, she has lots of uh, really artsy products that she makes, um, like stamps and stencils and things. I have a few things of hers from like the line she did with Stampendous a few years ago. Um, sadly, no longer available, but you know, you can, you can definitely do something like it using what you have. I'm gonna use a larger block here. And so this is just kind of like the lady. Um, what I'll do is I'm just gonna I'm just gonna paint her, and then I will stamp the clothing out of some pattern paper. I think that will be kind of fun. I'll get kind of bored coloring all of them, so I don't know if I'll get bored, but you know, it's so it's I like to have different options. You know, that way if I'm sending like a card to my mom and a card to my sister, I can send different ones because they might see them in each other's houses. <laughs> Let's see, look at that, I think, oh, I think I can fit that right there. Now one thing about scan and cut that I want to mention is that you need to have a continuous line. So like if there's, see like at the elbow, at the arm there where it's not continuous, I'll have to fill that in with a pen, okay? Um, otherwise it won't be able to recognize it and give me a, give me a trace. But I have to say that one tip for scan and cut is to and if, oh, if you don't know what a scan and cut is, it's like it's a die cutting machine, kind of like um, like a silhouette or Cricut or whatever. But the nice thing about scan and cut is it has a scanner in it. So what I do is I'll stamp my image, I'll color it in, and then I stick the paper to the mat. I put that in the machine and it cuts out around it for me. The other thing about scan and cut is that it doesn't do um, the interiors automatically. You have to um, do kind of, it's called like a... Uh, scan to cut data. It's it's a little bit more tricky. So like if I want to cut out that part on the inside of the arm, honestly what I do is I look at what I have in the background, I find a Copic marker that matches and I color it in because <laughs> I'm lazy. Um, but you can, you, there's a way to do it. Uh, Julie Faith on Balzer has great tutorials. She has a tutorial on that. I'm quite frankly too lazy and can't be bothered. So I just take a marker that's close to whatever I have in the background and I color it in. But um, I just make sure that I have a nice solid line. I find that coloring your image before you try to cut it out really helps it um, helps it recognize and cut well. You want to leave uh, just space between your images. You don't need a ton of space, but I try to leave like a half an inch 
at least between my images. Um, so if I decide I want to cut it out with a little bit of a border, I've got room. So, you know, if I've got enough room around those hands. And I might, I'll have more people than I do cards. So what I'll do is after I have these colored, I will just stick them in my card cart. And then when I'm making a card, you never know. I make cards out of the leftovers. I never know what I'm going to get. And, you know, it would be impossible for anybody to exactly recreate it because of the uh, random mishmash of stuff I have collected. But um, I feel like it makes my cards totally me and totally unique because it's not like you're going to go to one shop and buy all the supplies. I understand um, why card makers online do that. They'll use everything from one shop. Oftentimes they are affiliates or they're on design teams and... Um, they want to show off that shop's products because that's what they're, um, what, the, what they've agreed to do. I was going to say what they're paid to do, but most of them are not paid. Um, but I think most of us craft organically and we kind of look and see what we have and we design our projects around that. I mean, sometimes you just fall in love with something and you buy all the products for it. I can totally get that, but I'm more about showing what you can do, showing you the techniques and then you can use whatever supplies you happen to like. Aren't those cute? Oh my gosh, I, I like this too. It's a different style. It's a little chunkier. It's a little funkier, but uh, I think it's really cute. So I'm also going to have to just get some pattern paper and stamp the clothing for her out of that. I might have some in here, but I think I might have to go on a hunt for that. Something else I want to stamp though, while we've got our stuff out, um, I went in the other room. I grabbed my Mega Mount. Sometimes I call it a rock -a block This is a rock -a block right here. This is a Mega Mount. They're both really handy. They're curved stamp mounts, and they're great because um, you uh, sometimes you have a weird texture or like your stamping surface isn't totally flat or your stamp is really detailed. It's hard to get a good impression. These curved blocks make all the difference. Um, I don't use a Misty. Maybe you can get the same effect, but I love this because I can just kind of be really all over the place. Now I'm going to zoom out a little bit because... I need a little more space for this next thing. I'm gonna put my, uh, my big backgrounds. I'm wondering, I hope this will fit on my, I think it's just gonna fit on my Mega Mount. Sometimes I will tell you that um, when you are using like a cling stamp, sometimes it doesn't wanna stick very well. And when that happens, you can use a glue stick and you can stick down with a glue stick. Generally why it's not sticking is because, um, I mean, it could be just really dry and you're not getting the static, but I think generally it's because you've got crud on your stamp, like embossing powder or whatever, you know, the dust and debris that flies around your craft room. Glitter would be another culprit, or maybe your stamp mount isn't clean. So if you clean those guys up, you generally will, uh, you generally will make them stick. So I want to have them both ready to go. I've got uh, archival ink in black and in, I think it's called uh, cocoa or, or sepia. Uh, I stamped the ladies in sepia. I'm using archival because I'm going to be using my beautiful new watercolors to watercolor them. And if I wanted to use marker to color my ladies, I would use um, memento ink. That's my personal preference. There are other inks that will work. Uh, it just depends, you know, you just want to make, match the ink to what you're trying to do. I've got brushes, everything. This is a madhouse. All right, so my paper's dry, though, because uh, this is, I did this, did this last night, and I trimmed off the excess. So this is just uh, Blick sulfite drawing paper I'm using as my background because it's not super thick. It's probably like, I think it was 90, 80 or 90 pound, but it's not the same 80 pound like in cardstock. It's like, I don't know, it must have a different size parent sheet because it's, um, that's how they figure out how much a cardstock, how thick it is, what it weighs. They take the parent sheet um, and however f much 500 sheets of that weighs, that's what the weight of the paper is. But if your parent sheet is larger, obviously, then it's going to be a thinner paper. If your parent sheet is smaller, it could result in a thinner paper. So I wish we'd all go over to the GSM. Uh, what is that? Who does that? Uh, the British. I wish we went to GSM for measurements. And then, um, but I'd like to keep Fahrenheit. Can we keep Fahrenheit and we'll go over to metric for everything else? <laughs> it's not a lot to ask, is it? So I'm hoping this archival ink, which is supposed to be permanent on most surfaces, I'm hoping it will be permanent on this surface because this surface is a little suspect. Um, not really. I took the drawing paper and then I used Matte Mod Podge to adhere it to, uh, or to adhere some tissue paper, some uh, pattern tissue paper to it. And then, oh, that's not going to give me a very good impression at all. All right, I'll do it in a couple places though. Since I've done it, you do it one place, do it in a couple places. Maybe I'll actually just 
it'll be fine. Um, <laughs> I should have used, uh, you know what I should have done? Should have taken those clear button stamps that I had. Maybe we'll do that for the other one. Um, because this is definitely not going to give me the impression I want. But that's all right, I've already started it. What I'm gonna do is make what's called a master board. And you basically, you stamp a full sheet of something and then you cut it up for your project. Now, what I think I'll do actually is take this rag and just kind of distress it a little bit. That's fine. Let's try this. Let's try the pattern pieces. I have a feeling this might be a little bit better because it's a little bit bolder. See how, the, how tightly packed the image is there on the buttons? The pattern pieces are a little bit more bold. Um, so I think that might work. And let's try it with the black. Go bold or go home, right? I'm not sure if I really like all that dark area, so I might not eat that up the next time. Let's see what it looks like, though. I've got nothing, nothing is precious. That's, that's all right. I mean, no, that is kind of harsh, but. Oh, my stamp just fell off. That's too bad. Mm, well, I've already started that. I'll do that a few more places. Maybe not ink up that really dark black area. Let's wipe that off with a rag. Oh, by the way, my rag, these are old washcloths that have been like demoted to the craft room. Um, and then when I need to wash these out, I will, um, you know what, I'm going to use my rock block on that, my mega mount rather. Um, I just wash them in the sink with like dish soap and then let them air dry. I don't put them in the, I don't put them in my, um, washer dryer. This is a oil-based ink, so I don't really want that going in my dryer and also I don't want it to stain anything else that I wash it with. So even my watercolor rags, which honestly I'll use this rag for whatever. I don't use, uh, oh shoot, I don't use rags for um, uh, for oil painting. I use paper towels because of that. I'm not going to put those in my dryer. They could cause a fire and I'm not going to wash them out in the sink either. I think it's more um, better for the environment to just uh, do it the other way. All right, I'm not so sure. I think it's all right. That's gonna be fine. We're gonna put some colors on it. We're not gonna see too much of it, but I think it gives you the impression of, um, of pattern pieces. But I like that idea that we just had about doing the buttons on, like taking our button stamps and doing that on the background. Isn't that it? Thanks for that idea, guys. That was really good. That was a really good one. All right, so let's take out I'm glad I brought my whole binder of stamps in here. I'm thinking, because there's so many, these are nice and bold. Um, they don't all have to be. Oh, and I think I might have different, do I have different brands? I might have different brands together here. Because they feel a little different. I hope they ink up okay. I'm just going to try to space them out to make myself, make myself, I'm making my own background stamp. Maybe not get that. Maybe I'll actually I can be a little choosy with them, I think, because I've got so many. I'm wondering, I think I don't think these are all the same brand. Maybe they are. I was thinking one of them felt like really this one, that one feels like a higher quality stamp. I think I just stuck it in there because it uh but it doesn't really look like a button. I don't know how that ended up in there. Since this is going to be pretty bold, I want everything to definitely look like a button. Do a little one over here, over there, I don't know. Over here, over there, over here, over here, over there. I like circles. <laughs> Let's do circles. And one star with the... Lone Ranger over there, one star, the rest are circles. Do you want a heart? Uh, okay, mess up the whole equation. Honestly, don't overthink it because when you overthink it, I, I think it looks better the more random it is. 
Um, what color do we want to do? Black or brown? I think we'll do brown. I'm going to go with my first in instincts there. Uh, and maybe I should be doing this with acrylic paint. But I'm hoping that this will dry. I'm hoping that there's enough tooth in there from the watered down gesso that I applied. Oh, much better. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's imperfect, but you can tell they're buttons. Yeah. Much better. I'm going to turn it. I mean, these are going to be cut down small, so it doesn't really matter. I might sprinkle on some embossing powder because this, in, in case they don't, if they don't feel like they're going to dry for me, I might just, um, sprinkle on embossing powder to, you know, to seal anything because I'm going to do watercolor over this too, but I'm going to, um, Yeah, I'm going to cut this up. I think I can get five backgrounds from each of these sheets. And I'm going to cut them to like four and a four and a half by six and a half, I think. So they'll be perfect on my five by seven cards. And I like that. I think I do want the pattern pieces on it too. Actually, I don't know, I can see the other pattern pieces down pretty pretty well underneath. Maybe I don't. But you know what? I think I will add this on the other sheet. There, I think that looks alright. If it doesn't seem to dry, then I'm gonna I'll just pop on some clear embossing powder. You know what? I'll do the buttons on this, and if I like it, then I'll do the pattern pieces on the other one. The nice thing is we're gonna have a whole batch of cards when we're done. And, you know, I feel like there's no preciousness when you're making so many cards because, um, because you've got so many chances to try something else. Hmm. I think this one was more wrinkly. I think I wrinkled the tissue paper more. And that's the thing. It's like I can say, hmm, do I... Uh, I was worried about it being too boring without the wrinkles, but now I'm thinking, oh, you know, maybe having lesser wrinkles would given, have given me more options as far as the stamping. You live and you learn, my friends. Not the fine, wise, Linus more set. <laughs> set. <laughs> Oh, is this tedious or what, guys? I think it's fun. Well, it's probably tedious for you guys. I should probably edit this out more, but will I? Well, only only future me and you will know. I like, actually, you know what? I'm thinking I kind of like that pattern as well. I think I'm going to add that to the other one. Ah, yeah, you know what? I like it. I like that. And uh, it doesn't appear to be drying very well. I can see the black there is still shiny. I think I'll have to hit this with, um, well, you know what, we can do two things. We can, and I think what we'll do is embossing powder, but another thing you could do would be any sort of powdered pigment. Like, well, not any sort of powdered pigment. I mean like mica powder because mica powder will kind of, or chalk, not like, you know, brush or anything, but mica powder or chalk would work really well. I think, uh, this isn't gonna stick very well. Um, I need a piece of scrap paper to stick that down. I don't want to do it with my hands because I'll get ink on my fingers and then I'll get ink on my project where I don't want it. Looks like I already have got some ink on my fingers, but I'm just inking up this edge that's got the interesting um, pattern markings. Ah, why? All right, we're not going to use a block. Going commando on the stamp. <laughs> I'm gonna get demonetized. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I don't wanna, and actually, I feel like I have a little more control over where I'm gonna put stuff too. Actually, this is this one's pretty wrinkly as well. Yep. So, basically, the next step I'll do off camera because. Um, I'm going to go find some clear embossing powder, sprinkle it on. Ah, actually, 
You know what? I could do like, um, oh, you know what I might use? Those Seth after um, embossing powders that are like grungy. Mmm, I could go find those. Maybe I'll use the rusty one that I have of that because that won't be very shiny. It'll give me a little bit of um, a little bit of a vintage vibe. I think I'll, I'll do that. All right. So, uh, and I think I'll do that in the other in the room of Horde because I've got a higher power heat gun in there, and I got a big messy work table. So, uh, I'll see you after that is done. Okay, coming back to the naked lady, we got to give her some clothes. So, I just looked at my card cart. I had this uh, kind of. Uh, tail end of a 6x6 pad. I'd gone through all my 6x6 pads, gotten rid of a bunch, pulled up the papers I was going to use on others. And this one I actually liked quite a few of the designs and they're double-sided so I thought, you know, there's probably a good chance I'll find something that um, you know, that I like. And what I think I'm going to do is just go through and stamp on top of some of these papers. Um, and then I'll be able to paper doll style cut them out and I don't, I might actually be able to, I, I might try to see if I can cut them in the skin and cut, but I don't think I'll be able to because of the, um, uh, because of the pattern, but I got a good side on, something good on both of those sides. I like that stripe. Ooh, I like, I like those two as well. Ooh, I kind of like that too. I don't know, that would actually maybe work on the jacket. But these were, and this was a paper I really just wanted to use up too, so that is uh, doubly good. I'll probably just cut these out by hand because it'll be kind of a fun little, um, a fun little thing to do. I'm wondering if I should stamp that in black though. I don't know how well the brown will show up. We'll try brown, and if I feel like it needs moment, then I'll do it in black. But we'll try. We'll start with brown. A tip also for stamping is to choose blocks that are close to the size of the thing you're stamping. Um, that doesn't always happen. You might not have just the right size. I think the brown's going to be fine. Let's do a jacket in that as well. I'll be mixing and matching them, but I'm not sure what I'm going to want. Oops. I think I need to re-ink my ink pads. I probably use the archival ink for stamping more than anything else because I probably use... Um, I think I use... Oh, shoot. Uh, I didn't get her elbow. Yeah, I'll stamp that again. Um, because I'm more likely to be stamping with mixed media, even if I'm not like stamping something to color in, I might be stamping something for a um, for a background in a watercolor painting. So I use the archival the most. After that would probably be Memento. I actually really like that as a jacket pattern. I think it works better as a jacket than as a skirt. We'll do a, we'll have a few, a few options there. I could fit one more skirt in there. Let's just, is there anything good on the back? Oh yeah, there was kind of a good design on the back too. Hmm. Oh, you know what? Maybe I'll stamp, if I can stamp the jacket on that side. Well, here goes nothing. Double-sided paper, man. That's cute. I like that polka dot. Oh, I think I kind of like that more than the... Hmm. Well, you know what? If I have to stamp it again, then I'll stamp it again after I cut, cut out what I want to cut out. I like that. I think that would be a good skirt. I, don't, I think that print is too big. You want a small print when you're doing these like little paper doll type clothes. Which way... I'm going to give myself some options. Like I said, these were papers I just wanted to use up anyway, so... This is a great use for those little scraps of paper. Um, I don't know if you want to watch all this. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'll do a couple jackets, too. If I have to do another one where I want to use both sides of the paper, what I'll do is um, maybe cut the paper. Oh, that's got a cute little uh, thing there. Oh, I don't know which one I like better, the light, 
the light or the dark. I do like, I also really like that, so I kind of would like to just save that. I wonder if that will fit in my paper trimmer, my little paper trimmer. Because that's cute. That would actually be a cute front of a Valentine's card for my husband, so. I'll trim that and then, oops, I did not get that very straight. Goodness. I mean, that would be cute on a on a card from my husband. I think I'll save that for uh, for that. So hopefully I won't hopefully I won't lose it <laughs> before I need to use it. Don't lose it before you gotta use it. I think I like the lighter color because I have so many darker prints already. Another tip would be to clean up as you go. Shoot, I did that same thing with the elbow. Oh man. I know somebody out there is going, if you had a Misty, you wouldn't have to worry about that. But look at that. I'm a pro. Huh? Elbows fine. Fine, fine. Cherry wine. Uh, believe in yourself. That's nice. Maybe I'll use that for something. Uh, so I'll stamp the skirt over here. I do like the striped skirt. The slimming vertical stripes. Sometimes you don't know if it's going to look cute until you stamp it. I do like that though. That is cute. Hmm. What's on the other side of that? Um, I'm not sure what I think about that. I'll, I'll stamp a couple in there. We'll see how it goes. And then I'll let that dry fully. Sometimes the uh, archival ink takes a little long to dry because it's got that, um, eh, I don't think I like that for the skirt, maybe for the jacket, because it's got that kind of oily finish. So just give it time, or you can heat emboss it. All right, and again, why do I have such a hard time stamping that, pushing, I'm not, not pushing hard enough on the elbow part, or maybe there's a defect in the stamp. I don't think there's a defect. I think I just need to push a little harder there. Yeah, that's fine. The stamp is fine. Actually, I like that jacket. Now, here's another tip. If you are stamping, you're doing something like this, and you end up stamping extras that you don't end up using on your project, then you can cut them out and then put them in the package where you keep your stamps. Or if you keep them in a binder or whatever, put them with your stamps. Same thing if you cut masks out for like... Um, if you like to do stamp masking, save those masks right with the stamp. And then next time you go to use it, you know, you can make a quick card because you already got the clothes all stamped and ready to go. All right, so then what you want to do after this, I'll go back to one of my first ones. I like this jacket. Is that dry? Let's see. My hands are so ink stained right now, I can't even tell what's dry or not. Um, and go in with your scissors or your craft knife, however you like to cut things out. This one probably would have cut it on the skin and cut, but something small like this, to be honest, it's just, I think it's just as easy to do it by hand or something like this. Slightly angle your scissors under so that you don't have the white edge, if that bothers you. I think it looks a little bit neater. I'm not the world's best fussy cutter. That's why I have scan and cut. But for little fiddly things like this, it's actually quite nice to, uh, Cut it out by hand, I think. This one, this stamp has really nice thick lines too. So if you cut right on the lines, you get a good, you get a good, you get a good look, I think. Snip away excess paper so you're not fighting with it. I mean, you've cut things out before, right? You're an adult. You've you've passed kindergarten. You know how this works. Turn the paper, not the scissors. Another tip: buy a skin and cut. <laughs> Honestly, though. Um, uh, when this, the stamps and dies, they were so big. I never really got into the buying the matching dies for the stamps trend. I, most of the stamps that I have that have matching dies were sent to me from companies that wanted me to use them because really, um, I just thought that was so much money and it didn't, but it was convenient to have the matching dies. So once I figured that I could buy a skin and cut for about the cost of 10 die sets, 
it was no brainer because I have thousands of stamps and a scan and cut. You know, I could basically cut, have a die cut for whatever, whatever stamp I wanted. And it was easier to load paper into a machine than it was to crank, you know, dies through a machine for every single thing I wanted to cut out. Now, of course, it's not going to cut out like it. You, you are limited to the design you have, like you're limited to the shape that you put into it. The, uh, the thing that's drawn out or stamped out, it's going to cut that. Um, whereas if you have a die cut of a heart, you can cut a heart out of pattern paper or out of whatever. Um, actually, I mean, you can do that with skin and cut too. You can put, you can put designs into it that you want. It has some pre-programmed ones, but you know, it's, I guess they both, they both have their place. They both have their place, but you know, I, I don't like running little dies. I don't like trying to line up dies and stamps on my die cutter and cranking it through. I do sometimes, but that's not my favorite thing in the world. There. So you do that for all of your little clothing pieces and then... You'll just, you know, put the outfits on after it's all painted and cut out and you put it on your card. So easy peasy. All right. Uh, we're going to do some watercoloring. I did do some nice big swatches here. I don't know if I showed you those or not because I also was filming at the beginning of my review for the Gansai Tambi new Art Nouveau set. So I have those. Are they gorgeous? Oh, they're going to be so pretty with this. Um, I got my people here and I'm going to watercolor them. Now, since I'm going to skin and cut them, I will be careful to stay within the lines. Uh, because otherwise, if I wasn't, if I was going to hand cut these, I would just be really loosey-goosey with them. Um, I haven't decided or not whether I will, um, whether, I should start on this side so I don't get my hands on anything, whether or not I will add a pattern to these dresses, because I could take some, like, peg stamps and uh, do a pattern. That would be kind of pretty. Um, but we'll see. I mean, I might just like this kind of giving your eyes a place to rest. on these and I just these colors are so pretty that I think that I think on their own they're gonna they're just gonna look really nice um I'll take some of that darker blue I'll just clean my brush off beforehand plus an excuse to use some new goodies right Especially with this many cards, I'm like, it's just going to be way quicker to watercolor them than to try to Copic or alcohol marker color them, I should say. But you have to let me know in the comments below. Do you prefer coloring with watercolors, markers, Copic, uh, and co or what kind of markers? Also do dark to light. You can put the darks in. I probably would just do the pen, do the like the buttons with like a um, gel pen or something. I really like the colors in this set. They're going to be so perfect for these vintage looking cards. When you are doing watercolors, make sure that you leave, um, uh, like if you're trying to color, like I wouldn't want to do the skin right now where I just put the, the uh, dress color in. So I'll probably do something like that. Use just two colors and let them let them blend together. Something like that. I know it's why did I do the upside down one? I don't know. Uh, we'll do this one with pink. We got we got so many pretty pinks that we can pick from. Um, I could do those two. I could do these two. Let's do a base of this uh, this light pink. That way you can see it painted right side up. But the archival ink is an oil-based ink. It's not going to be bothered by the watercolor. The hot press paper, um, it might feel a little weird to paint on. It does want to resist this paint a little bit. And I think that's just the uh, nature of the really smooth surface. I recommend the Fabriano Studio hot press uh, watercolor paper 90 pound for stamping because it's very affordable and the quality is nice and um, the 90 pound would go through your printer if you needed it to for some reason now if you have an inkjet printer it would also you know your inkjet stuff would would um would run if you put water over it but if you did like if you printed something out in a really really pale color you could paint over it and then it could just blend in like if you did um Oh, like you printed out some pattern ladies in light brown or something, and then by the time you, when you colored it in, any 
bleeding would just kind of look like some vintage effects. You could bleed into the shadows in the skin or whatever. I like that. It's pretty. It kind of reminds me of like pattern illustrations where it is so. Um, where it is so watercolory. Markers, actually, markers would do that too, but it, you know, would also look totally believable. Uh, for the skin, all I'm going to do is um, we could do whatever color you want. Um, I think I'm going to look back at my swatch show because I don't want to go with a granulating color. Like that color has quite a bit of texture to it. <coughs> I might do um, like the Ecru with a little bit of coral pink blush. Maybe add a little bit of, um, uh, yeah, these really aren't actually, they aren't really great skin tones, but, um, well, maybe the flax and Ecru will be alright as long as I don't add too much water. Let's add the flax in the shadow and see. There are a few browns, but the, the browns aren't really a great skin tone either. You're probably better off either going with a skin tone set or... Um, or mixing skin tones from a more traditional palette. I think this one's a little too... The, the earth tones granulate too much, I think, to be good skin tones. Like, this is pretty yellow. I don't think I like that. I might have to go... You know what's a good, uh, kind of fun one is like the Jane Davenport, neutral, like their, uh, her skin tone one. I might grab that. And a little bit of... Yeah, plus these really cover up the features. Oh, I'll do this one. I'll finish up doing this one. But I think I will switch to something else for... Something with a mixing tray to do the rest of the skin tone. I mean, this is this will work. This isn't bad. Um, but actually, you know what? Maybe I will stick with this because when I'm thinking about like the pattern people... Like the people in the pattern packets, they do kind of have, they don't have the most realistic skin tone, so. Now think about it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go through, I'm going to color these different people, and um, then I'm going to put them in my skin and cut to cut them out. I'm going to do that for each of the sheets that we, that we, uh, that we stamped. I want to pop back in here really quick because I want to show you the difference. Um, I just did this one right here, um, and I mixed my skin tones from the set, and I think it looks a lot better than this. This is way too yellow. So what I did was I took this little dish, and here are the colors that I am using. I'm going to use some of this Venetian red right here. I'm using um, this, uh, I think it was called Ecru Flax. I think that's what it was called. A flax. No, it's called flax beige, and then I'm using the ecru beige. And I'm using the coral pink. And I'm also using some of the. It's called grayfish. <laughs> what an what a what a appealing name. When I take the grayfish and I mix it with the um, Venetian Venetian red. Then I can get a nice brown that would be, I think that would be really good for a lot of the darker skin tones too. I'll be using it for some shadows. Um, so that's going to give you a lot more, a lot more um, options. You could go in with like, um, with like color pencils to do facial features and stuff. You do have to watch about splotchiness if that bothers you. I actually think I kind of like the little bit of splotchiness, um, but that's up to you. Maybe she looks alright. I think she looks a little on the yellow side, but that's just a nice way that you can mix your own colors. So now let me do another 
You know what, let me do one of these bigger ones. That'll be a little easier for you to see. And I'll show you what I mean. So I could start with like, um, like shadows. And that is the Venetian red plus the um, grayfish blue. Uh, I'm just gonna bring that. No point in painting everything because you're not gonna see everything. Actually, do you even see? I think the jackets, the jackets cover the whole torso. I'm gonna go with some of this uh, flax. Oh shoot. Got other lines, but I think I can blot that off. Yep. Do a little bit of the pink. As you can see, it's just not um You don't have to be too too fussy about it. Pink in the legs. Really, you'll need to paint what's gonna what's gonna show. And I'm keeping it very loose. You could actually even leave the collar part white if you wanted to. Um, it just depends on how you want your like. Do you want it to look like she's got a white shirt under her jacket or just the jacket? That's basically what it comes down to. If you want to leave the collar white, all you would do is when you paint the um, the person here. Just be careful when you go in on the neck and leave the other part white or paint it whatever color you want. Do a little contouring. Pick up a little of that ecru color and you'll get the hang for how much uh, how much water your paper wants. A hot press paper is smoother, so it's uh, nice for stamping. So there you go. I mean, this this paint might be a little, a little chunky for for skin, but I really want to keep it all coordinated. So I'm using I'm gonna use the same thing the whole way through so there you go just wanted to put that in there oh you could do the back leg a little bit darker so it's in shadow and then the front leg a little bit lighter I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on it because it's one element on a card that is uh that I'm making ten of so I'm gonna temper my expectations of what I what I'm going to do, but but there you have it, and, and you can adjust it to how dark or light the skin tone you want. If you want something with a darker skin tone, you want to go more with the blue uh, Venetian red and blue mix. And if you find that it's like the colors aren't good for highlighting, you can do just a little bit of a um, color with a color pencil or something like for the lips or the cheek. Actually, that color looks really nice, I think. Yeah, try not to use too much water either because you don't want to buckle your paper. I still also would recommend taping your paper down to your mat if you're going to use a scan and cut to cut it out because any sort of like little buckles will um, make it not want to stick to the paper, uh, the mat, and then if it shifts at all, then you've got some issues. I think I want a little bit of. I need to go with a little darker red for her cheeks.
Let's see if that's if that works. Get it fill up some of the water. Ah. Shoot, I'm just lifting up. Alright, I'm gonna repaint that and then just drop in the cheek color while it's still wet, I think. And also the neck needs a little more shadow, I think. Now pick up some of that red. That red's kind of hard to control. But since these colors are a little semi-opaque, they do uh, um, they do work well for for skin tones. We just don't have a lot of place to, a lot of space to get in and blend. Ah, now we got too much red there. But you get the idea. All right, keep watercoloring. Okay, it's the next day, and I have watercolored these these uh, pattern people, and I think they look really cute. I'm hopefully going to be able to scan and cut these. If the scanner does not recognize the edges, I will have to go in and very finely outline with like a pen, and then I'll put it through again. But I'm thinking this will probably scan. I decided to look at my background paper, which I've I've chopped down into um, into matting layers. So these are four and three quarter by six and three quarter. And I looked at the background color, tried to approximate it as best as I could, and I went in with watercolor, colored in any negative space that was gonna be white. Uh, that way it would kind of um, go. What I did was I looked at my swatch sheet, I held my background papers up and found that this color here was pretty close, so that's what I'm using for that. Um, and I also cut out, I fussy cut out all of my little uh, outfit pieces for these pattern people. And that way I can, after I've cut these out, I can put the outfits on however I decide to um, match them up. And I've got plenty of extra, so. See? So fun. So cute. Okay, and they're just in this little tray. These are from the Dollar Tree. They're really handy for, or anytime you have like, sometimes you'll get stuff like frozen. Um, your like TV dinners or just stuff that you buy at the store. <laughs> it comes in packaging. Uh, often you'll get like things will come in like divided little trays like this cookies sometimes come in like these little and crackers divided trays. Those are so handy for keeping your little bits and bobs organized when you're creating. So don't throw those out. Save them for these types of projects. So one thing I thought would look really cute uh, was to take these background pieces and out of those two sheets of 12 by 18 drawing paper that I decoupage the pattern pieces on um, and I did go in with some, I did some rust tapestry embossing powder, very old stuff by Personal Stamp Exchange, um, just to kind of lock down that ink. Um, I like the way it looks, it works good. I took a couple scraps and I just kind of brushed some watercolor on there and then wiped off the excess and I like that little bit of muted color so I'm going to show you how I did that. Very easy. I'm basically just going to go with the colors that I've used, um, but I'm, I am going to wipe off any extra so that I don't have a ton of color. I just basically want to get a little bit of um oh maybe just like a little bit of a a patina there. Just around the edges. Keep in mind a lot of this is going to get covered up so you can just kind of blot off. And plus the middle areas where I put down my largest pattern person the negative space is going to match up with some of these colors here. So I'm just going to do that on all of these pieces, just with any of the colors I've used. These, since I've just stuck to this palette here, um, this Gensai Tambi Art Nouveau palette, everything is going to be pretty well coordinate, coordinated. I also like how the, um, how the color's going to, um, You know, it's all gonna it's all gonna work together because I've used the same palette. And just I just want a light kind of rouging or blushing here. If you wanted a more stronger color, you could go in with acrylics, um, or you could even use the watercolors with less paint. Let me show you here. Um, I'll take some of this mauve color. You know, use it with less 
with less water. This is just, I mean, there's a little bit of gesso on here. It's not going to like take a ton of paint just because the Mod Podge makes it a little bit, you know, resistant, but you know, just get a little color there. So do that for your background pieces and let them dry and cut out your pattern people. And we'll see you here for the next step. How satisfying is this guys? It cut these ladies out perfectly. I still need to go in. I, f I forgot to add the background color in her arm there, but ah, I love it. Cut it out so well. Hopefully the other ones cut out well too, but look at that. Great cutouts. These cut out perfectly as well. I didn't have to outline anything. So I'm just so thrilled with how well the skin and cut worked for cutting these out. And I am going to save the leftover pieces for, um, for stencils because I mean, how cool does that look? I mean, I think that just looks so fun. That would be either a fun overlay in an art journal, or I don't know, maybe I would want the stencil for using with those stamps. I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm going to save those for future projects and maybe they will be handy. I hope. <laughs> so the next thing I'm going to do is take my little panels that I have added the tinting to and I'm going to adhere them onto my card bases. But the first thing I want to do before I do that is actually add um, some fake stitching. So I've got a Sharpie here and I'm going to use a Sharpie because um, I want to make sure I have a pen that's going to that's going to dry on this material. It's gotten kind of glossy. I've got, you know, that rust embossing powder. I've got Mod Podge, gesso, watercolor. You know, I just want to make sure that whatever I use is going to stick. And um, I'm going to use my score buddy for a guide so I can use this little um, piercing tool. These are from EK Success. I know EK Success is no longer in business, but the ScorePal company actually made some of these exact same things. They're called scoring bugs. So if you don't have the EK Success one, you can get them from the ScorePal company. And this is a little score buddy, um, but you could use any ScorePal, any sort of scoring board, I believe will work with this. And what I'm going to do is use this to run some fake stitching along the edge. And it just goes right in the groove so easily. Whoops. I pressed the little button and I shouldn't have. Whoops, there we go. As I say that, <laughs> it's like, no, we will not work for you. Okay, can you see that little groove? Now, alternately, I don't know if that's going to show up. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. Um, another way you could do it is do it on the back side. So I'll show you that on this one. So you can see you can see this way and uh, decide what you prefer. You also don't have to have a score pal. You can do this with like a, a thumbtack and like a mouse pad and just kind of poke holes. That would work really well. And so this way gives you um, like the raised up so you can see both of them side by side and see which one you prefer and then after you've done that you're going to take a ruler and you're going to line the ruler up to those dots and trace it with a sharpie or whatever and it gives you kind of that um that, that kind of, it just, I don't know, the way it makes it kind of, <clears throat> I don't know, it just makes the stitching look a little bit more like stitching rather than just a line. Or, or you could even draw dashed lines, or you could use a stamp. You know, I do have stitching stamps, but this one actually does give you a little bit of texture. So that is it on the raised dots. And we'll do one on the sunken dots. I think I like the sunken dots on this paper because it's so, there's so much going on on it anyway. I like to drag it because I think that that looks a little bit more realistic too if you drag it along the dots so that the tip of the pen, whoops, I went off track there. Oh yes, just keep in mind, this is not like nothing that we're doing in this card is like perfection. Everything has the potential to be a little wonky. 
Um, and if you're not cool with that randomness, then, you know, a stamp might work a little bit better. See, I prefer, I prefer this one with the, with the dots that go in myself, but different strokes for different folks. Now, I've got my card bases here, and I'm not sure if I told you the tip to flatten them out. I ran it through my die cut machine, uh, my manual die cutter between some plates, and that I ran it a a few uh, through a few times and to get me a really give me a really nice flat surface to work on which I really appreciate and also after I um, after these were dry I put them under a under a book to dry I mean to flatten so uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna see how my ATG adhesive works if it does good oh shoot didn't stick. I might have to go to score tape though. Anytime I'm doing a mixed media, I that any sort of like buckling can sometimes keep it from adhering really well. So I'm gonna see how well this works. And um, oh, right now, actually, I think I will go to the other tape because there's something about this. Oh, you know what I think it is? I think it's because I had stuck on wax paper. I think the wax transferred. So I'm gonna use score tape for this. Any, a little bit, it's a stronger tape. This is actually generic score tape. It's a from Craft Chameleon, but score tape, Suquang tape, any, any of those really strong tapes will work well. And then I'm just gonna go and adhere those, all the panels onto my card bases right now. If you're only making one card, obviously you just need to do that once, but I feel like if I'm going to do all these steps, it doesn't really take that much longer to make 10 cards versus one card. So I'm just going to go through and uh, do that for the rest of these cards. And we'll see you back at the next step. Okay, I'm going to finish the cards up. I've actually finished up eight of them. And uh, I want to try a different, bunch of different ideas. And I'm like, I'll do two on camera. The best of the best ideas, I think. And uh, then I'll show you all the cards all done. This has grown into a massive project. It is Monday. I've been working on these since like last Wednesday or Thursday. So um, yeah, it's kind of been 10 cards has, has, in, in, <laughs> has like totally overtaken my week uh, or the last like five days or so. Um, so when we last left, we had... Um, we had finished our backgrounds, added the faux stitching, and glued them down to our papers. So let's start with this one here. This is one of the backgrounds. Um, we're gonna decorate the front. So I found a bunch of mini envelopes and I'm gonna use, I can use it either way. I kind of, it's funny, I kind of like that. You know what I think I might do? I think I might tuck this flap inside the envelope and glue it down that way. And then I kind of like a little pocket. I think that would work a little bit nicer because I like the decoration on the front of that envelope. So let's just adhere that down. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit of adhesive kind of on the sides there. I'm gonna use my, my skinny score tape just because it's a little bit skinnier. And honestly, I had everything right here. That's it, the problem when you're doing these projects is that you lose your stuff. I gotta find that. It was literally right next to this, my glue gun right at my left hand. Oh my. <laughs> I, I've been, uh, I've been, I did a Zoom crafty night, uh, Friday night with some friends and I worked on these and, um, I'm like, I can't believe how long these are taking me. <laughs> but I've been having fun. It, it's fun. I um, I am liking the way they came out. And I think they'll be fun to send. I think people will enjoy them. So, okay. And then I'm going to put some adhesive on the edges so I can stick the pocket down. So these little envelopes came in a just a little um, pack of like stationary stuff. Um, from a stationary pal. So then I can stick that right in there. Oh, this does not, this is a... trickier than it looks. Why won't that go in there? It wants to catch on the envelope front. There we go. Okay, so that's gonna go in there. We'll put something 
in there, either a tassel or some lace or ribbon or something. And which lady do I want to use? I've used a bunch of this one, so I think I'll use... I think I'll use this one right here. Oh, you know what? I think I'll put this lace in there. Oh, what would be pretty, actually? Well, sometimes I like to put a little baker's twine in there. I wonder if I thread this through. This was the, um, the front of the little booklets that these stickers came in. I figured, why not use that? Then I could take a little bit of twine and tie that around in a little bow. I think that'd be really cute. I usually like to do my, um, like tie my twine right while it's on the spool so I don't waste too much. Ribbon too, if it's like a spooled ribbon. And so I have a little bit of scrap. Um, on the raw end but not on the spool end actually that will work about right i think and snip that i'm going to try to snip it right on that crease i think at the beginning of the video i was telling you about the the like um stamp that i had that makes the bobbin that i wrap my like rip my twine around that's what it looks like isn't that cute i think it's adorable Okay, so that looks pretty cute, just as it is. I can slide that back in. I did. Okay, I think I'm going to need to, um, you know what? I think I'm going to take that super strong tape and just go along the edges to really stick that down. Maybe I'll do the wider stuff. I have this in a couple different widths. It's like score, it's a score, there's score tape and then I've got the Craft Chameleon brand that's just the, the generic. But... It's stronger than the ATG gun. Hope you're enjoying this little craft along. I have no idea. You know, it's like, uh, I don't know how people will, will react. The thing I like about the ATG gun is you don't have the release paper to deal with and to pick up when you're all done because, you know, you'll be picking up all scraps. I want to get a little bit of extra on this. I could have just taken a little piece of paper and actually just um, adhered it down on the core on the edges and made a pocket like we're going to do on the inside of our thing. I didn't think of that though. But I do like this. It does give it some nice dimension and then we've got our lace there which is pretty. Okay so one thing I was doing on some of these but honestly I didn't think it this was an idea actually this was a great idea. Several of you guys suggested it to, to me when I showed you the uh, cutouts on the sat chat. And so the idea was to like put this down on the paper and then like dab some ink or some paint through it to make a shadow. And I did that on some, but honestly, I didn't think it was, it, it looked okay, but I didn't think it was really, it was really that, uh, that noticeable. So I think I'm going to skip that on this one. And I'm just going to hot glue this down to give it some Give it a little bit of dimension. So I've got my hot glue gun here. Just easier to use a hot glue gun than foam tape. You get the dimension and it adheres it really well. If your glue dries on you, just blast it with a heat tool. That'll also remove any strings. Oh shoot, you can't... Uh, Move it around too much. I did. Oh, wow, that's a very resilient. That background paper that we made is very resilient because I was able to peel that up. Um, you can't move it around too much, though, because it dries really fast. All right, and then the clothing I picked out. I stamped up a bunch of this, so I'll, and, a bun and I have a few extra pattern people that I'll just put in a little packet. A pocket full of pattern people. But I like this because it gives it a little bit of dimension. And I decided to go with this coat. I'll show you the little, how I'm storing that. It's how I store all of my little like embellishments and my little paper collage bits in my card cart. I got them on Amazon. They're just these little, um, little, like, uh, they're little packets. Let me see what I do with that one. I'll show you. They're not the most 
sturdy things and they can split like this one split so I might have to I'll just put tape on the edge of that but you know just put all the, your leftover pieces in there you can either slide it in with your you know with your stamp set or you can keep it with your embellishment stuff whatever whatever works for your organization but uh, that works pretty well for me I think I'll probably take uh yeah let's grab a little color pencil and we can just kind of um make our match our background a little bit better the part that I colored in and I'll take a little brown it's a very reddish brown maybe a little grayish uh, beigey color just to kind of help help blend that in You could do a shadow with this too if you wanted to. You know, you can you can do more to it. Something else you can do is take a marker, like a, um, a gray or something, and go in there and dissolve that a little bit, and just kind of just kind of get it to blend with your background a little bit. I scribble it off. I don't want to get any like any Mod Podge or gesso or color pencil to stain on my the tip of my marker. Okay, so let's see. We've got this. We've got that. I could do a little bit of a little bit of trim there. That might be cute. I'll do a little bit of trim. I'll glue it then. Messy. I'm messy today. That's all right. The glue strings you can remove by just blasting it with a heat gun as well. There we go. You can tack it down if it doesn't want to lay flat. You can put like a little touch of glue. I think it would flatten out. If you put it in an envelope properly, I think it would flatten it down. Just be careful you don't burn your hands off when you're using your hot glue gun. All right, and then for embellishments, I've got this little perfume bottle. I could use that over there. I'm gonna think about that. I cut it off of a sheet from, uh, oh, these were stickers. They were called like foil stickers. They're kind of like epoxy stickers from, uh, from Dollar Tree. Um, I don't know if they still have them or not, but I'm just going to set that there for now. I've got pink buttons. I've got some white buttons. Um, I've got some peach here. Got some gold and brown ones. Let's see what looks good. Now, I probably will end up putting extra postage on these because um, They have gotten a little lumpy since I, I don't know if I like that little, that little thing there. I kind of maybe like this one a little bit simpler, actually. Hmm. Yeah, now that I set that there, I don't think I like that there, but you know what? I like this perfume bottle with this girl, so I might just uh, set them aside somewhere together to use elsewhere. Maybe I could use them on the inside of the card as well. I kind of like that one, actually. I kind of like that one a little more simple. So maybe we'll leave this one simple. To decorate the inside of our card, I'm going to take some vellum. I've cut some vellum down to three inches by uh, five and... What did I do? These are five. Three inches by, by just under five inches. And I had this pretty vellum that was buttons, embossed buttons. And I bought this probably like, I don't know, almost 20 years ago. I don't know, it was a long time ago. And I remembered that I had this. It was by Can Company. Um, and I can't remember if I bought this at Martin's or like, or if I got it at um, a scrapbooking store. I'm thinking it was either from Martin's or it was from that scrapbooking thing that used to be in Augusta, Maine. I can't remember, but I've been saving this because it was so precious. I think I might have actually had a few, I think I had a few sheets of this and I did um, used it in my wedding album. So yeah, that was a long time ago. And... I had one sheet left over and I thought, you know what, why save this when I can actually have the, I have a great thing to use on. I remembered it and I found it within like 
10 seconds in my in the room of Ford because I knew it was with my I put all my pattern vellum in a stack on one of the in one of the drawers one of those little slots that I had I did that a while ago I got rid of the little envelope I had on my pattern vell vellum because I wasn't using it so I'm like if it was more out in the open I'd use it more and sure enough I found it I found I actually found several suitable options if I couldn't find this but I found this and I'm glad I did because I think it's really pretty then uh, off camera I took a um, I took an embossed an embossing folder and I took a piece of I think it ended up being four and a quarter by six and a quarter so I could get three pieces from a regular piece of cardstock and this embossing folder I think came with a magazine like one of the uh, British magazines that are they their paper is a little different than ours they have a uh, um, Honestly, where's the ink pad? They had, their paper is a is slightly different proportion. It's a little bit longer than ours, so I think it's sized for their style, their paper, probably in quarters and not the um, American letter size in quarters. So that's why I just decided to cut my uh, paper a little bit longer so it would accommodate that frame. I've never used this before, so it's always nice to use something that you've never used before. I'm gonna do this to the other one too. This ink pad is kind of old and dry, but it's perfect for just catching these raised edges. And this will be where I'll write my sentiment. Because I thought these cards would be great for Mother's Day or uh, even a birthday card or thinking of you, thank you, anything like that. So I thought it'd be great to make these, um, you know, versatile and reusable. So I have these little sentiments and it says, this card was handmade to be reused. Remove this note and send me on to someone you love. And I'm going to put that up here. And I found these really cute little bow tie um, these little bow tie clips in my stash and I thought they were just so cute that I'm going to use them to attach these little notes and that will go right inside my right inside my card. So I think that works out really well and it's really cute and you know I think I got those at Joann's. They might still be uh, available because it wasn't too long ago that I got them. And then I'm simply going to slide this inside the pocket here. And then to further decorate the inside of the card, actually, I'm thinking I might put, I think I might put this lady in there. I think that's really cute. But I want this to be flat on the inside of the card, so I'm just going to use some double-sided tape here. And it's a little more protected because it isn't inside the card. And then when I do that, I just fold over any loose adhesive bugs here. So I think that'd be really cute just to put this over here. I can use a sticker. We always have the best intentions with stickers, don't we? Actually, I could put that right there, put that right there. We have the best in intentions with stickers, but it doesn't always come to pass, right? We don't always use them. Now I will find my pink, my pink stickers and throw a couple pink ones in here. I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave the stickers in here just loose or if I'm going to put them on my um, on the outside of the envelope. I think either would be cute, or maybe some of each. But I think decorating the envelope is really... Uh, oh, that's a really pretty one. So I'll either use those stickers or some of those stickers to decorate the envelope, and the other will just be like a little, I don't know, a little gift. And there is that one. I think that's really cute, and I love reusing the packaging, because, I mean, it's nice. It's nice when the packaging is pretty and you can reuse it. The next one, uh, we are going to put together here. We've got our insert. I'll just set that aside. Um, so for these, for some of these, I had the idea to, um, and I just basically went through my stash. I had some pockets and some um, die cut tags. I used some die cut tags for my kit with Paper Craft Society and just some random ones. I'm not sure where they came from. And uh, I had these little doilies. And so what I did was I put them through my, my Zyron Creative Station. And I'm going to trim off a section of this and use it on my bookmark because I love to add bookmarks. I think they're really pretty and they can be saved and used as bookmarks. And I think still think the cards are cute enough to go without the bookmarks. So, and I think there's enough going on in these cards. So if people want to keep the bookmark and then gift the card, I, I think that's totally uh, fine. I'm going to see if I have room to stick that on there. Yes, that's just going to fit. Okay. Now the one thing with the Xyron stuff, that that is pretty strong adhesive and when it's on something flimsy like a paper doily, you do have to be careful when you're peeling it back that um, that you don't tear the doily.
but this is really great for gluing down those dainty things because then they won't get torn. So I'm going to carefully, as carefully as I can, line this up on the edge. I'll probably have my head in the camera, so I apologize. Uh, just going to get it in there, lined up on the edge as carefully as I can. If you do have to pull it up, try to do it right away before the adhesive really has a chance to set. There. And I'm just going to roll off. If there's any adhesive left in the in the center, I'll just kind of roll it off with my finger. And then if there's any kind of sticking out, just kind of roll it off the edge. Um, now I want to find a little pattern person to put on there. And I want to figure out what I want to do for... Oh, I think I like that. Do I like that? Do I like that one or this one? Or I could use that as a border. But I don't think I need a border element. I think I want to go... Or is that too much? Hmm, I don't know. I'm gonna try. I think I think that'll work. I'm gonna trim it off a little neater though, because it's a little rough. These are all vintage. Um, oh, I should have trimmed it after I put it through there so it wouldn't get all frayed again. These are just vintage laces from my birdcage laces. Um, and that's why I just store all my lace in bird cages because I think it's kind of pretty. Uh, I don't know if that's like the best long-term storage because you know they could get you know, they get a little dusty, but not too bad. I just kind of like shake off the, shake off the, the dust. We'll do that same trick with the, um, with the Baker's Twine, especially because the other one we could pull through like a lark's head knot. We don't want to knot this. It'd be way too bulky. So we can use some twine. Um, I don't think that last one we did would actually require extra postage. I think that could probably be mailed just fine because there's no buttons, but if you're going to use real buttons, they probably will need extra postage. All right, and give this a little... This feels very awkward. But these are really cute, I think, and it's nice to receive a card in the mail, especially, like, if it's something you wouldn't expect, you know? Like a thank you or a thanking, or, you know, thank you or thinking of you, or something like that. Or Galentine's. And I've got a couple weeks in order to get them in the mail, so wish me luck. Okay, I think that's cute. Ugh, that's a little kinked, but... Alright, I don't have a purple person, but let me see about blue blue people. Um, I could have something narrow enough. That's kind of cute, but I think I want something a little bit more casual. Oh, well, that's kind of cute. Green would also work well, I think. See, this is that what I was talking about, the little packaging. Well, you saw that at the beginning of the video anyway. Oh, I like that one. I think I've used one of these stickers elsewhere, too. I like that one. I think I'll use that one because it's very casual. And I'm just thinking if there's anything else I want to put with that. Oh, we've got to keep the bookmarks flat. Oh, you know what? I think I'll do a little stamping on there. Let's stamp. Um, <laughs> let's use our archival ink. And... Um, I gotta find my stamps that I just misplaced. I'll be right back. All right, I'm gonna use this uh, measuring tape stamp. Probably should have stamped this before I put the uh, ribbon on there, but that works fine. And let's stamp these buttons. Yeah, that's cute. I like that. I guess we're at our craft museum night. I just, um, I just basically like worked on these and chit chatted and hung out, and it was a lot of fun. Um, but then I kind of forget like the different options, some of the different, the different, uh, 
stamps that I did, the different things that I did to these. But I'll show you all the cards at the end. I'll give you some different ideas as well. Somebody said that these stickers are also available that, like completely clear if you didn't like the, the white um, the white halo. I don't mind it because like I'm kind of like stand, putting them on top of the doilies and putting them on areas that are pretty light so they just kind of disappear. Um, and the clear one, I don't, I don't know if the clear ones would, would show up quite as well on the paper, but I don't know. I don't know, probably look great. Okay, so I got that little vellum bookmark sleeve. So let's figure out where I want everything to go on this one. Um, I think I'll probably let that, let the, have the, have this lady on first. Now this one actually, I feel like I could use a little bit more, um, I could use a little bit of a shadow there. So maybe I will use my stencil for a shadow. So let's figure out where do I want her. And let me set the stencil over. Let me just shift it a little bit. And I'm gonna need some paint. Uh, yeah, actually, you know what? I'm gonna use a marker. I'm gonna use a marker because it's gonna be a little bit easier. Let's see how that color looks. I might need to go a little bit darker, but probably will. This isn't very dark. I just need to get the edges really. Darker. I'll cap it. I'll cap it after I um. Here we go. I'll cap it after I get this color down. I need the broad side. I'm just gonna smudge it with my fingers if I can. good because I can really see all of the rest of it. Yeah, that'll help her stand out just a smidgen. All right, let's glue her down. I was using acrylic paint the other night, but um, that's long dried and I put the paint away because I'm like, eh, I don't know if I want to bother with that. Okay, now we'll do our little vellum pocket there. And I'm gonna use a strong double-sided tape for that. Now it, well, actually, because this vellum does have a couple of, has a fold over on it, it's like two layers of vellum, you're not really going to see the adhesive, but sometimes it can be tricky to glue vellum down. You could always sew it down or apply like the um, Xyron adhesive all the way to the whole back of the, like the pocket. And that would work because then you have adhesive on the whole thing so you won't see it. That would actually have been a really good idea, but I didn't think of it. fingers on it. You could also, you also wrap some uh, tape or something around it or I mean twine or whatever if you wanted to there. Um, I didn't think about that yet but I also have these cute little um, this cute little tab I want to put on there. Cute little tag from a little collage pack. You never know what you're gonna find. I like just put all my collage stuff in, um, in pockets and trays in my card making cart so that I just happen upon stuff. I happen upon things put together in interesting ways just by virtue of, you know, fishing through stuff for new stuff. I have things like sorted by like, I don't know, it might be nature or uh, uh, it might be, I don't know, nature, flowers, 
sewing things, <laughs> mushrooms, you know, just weird little, little subsets of things. And I think I would like some buttons on this one to kind of liven it up a little bit. We've got a cute little snap. I like the little snap. This one's really thick. That definitely will require extra postage if I decide to use it. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can get away with not adding the extra postage. It, it's totally, it totally depends. Sometimes your, your cards will end up postage due though if you don't, if you don't, um, you don't abide by their rules, their posted rules. I kind of like that. Those are, that's really thick though. Hmm, that one is really thick. Oh, I should have found another one. I could use my button die cuts, but um, I felt like it needed some, I had so much paper going on, I just felt like it needed a little more reality. Sometimes I'll put buttons on upside down. I think I like that one. Although, if I'm not hand delivering that, that's gonna catch. I was thinking about just using white buttons as well. So I've got these here. Mm. The hemming and hawing process does take some time, generally. Oh, you know what? Maybe I'll do that one because that is nice and that's that feels a little bit flatter. So another trick that I have, these are, it's uh, this wire that you can get for like stems in the floral section of a, of a store. And it's really handy for threading buttons because you don't have to like, it's very easy to thread. And the other thing I like is that I can take a marker and I can, I can stain it if I don't want it to be white. And then you just use a pair of um, little snips, little wire cutters to to snip it. And sometimes I'll use like the um, the thread that um, like the uh, oh what's it called cording. It's like a it's um, like hemp cording. I'll use that for threading buttons because it's just so much easier. Let's see if I can poke that last little bit through. I didn't give myself very much tail. But the nice thing is you don't waste much with this either. That might end up being a little frayed, but uh, I'm okay with it. I didn't, give, I didn't give myself quite enough, but it's a little, it's a little frayed, but that's fine. I think that looks extra vintage. Oh, actually, though, I don't have to do that because I had more in there. Let's see if I can feed that through. Oh my gosh, this is probably not very entertaining. But by now, I mean, we only have the diehards here <laughs> by this stage of the game. Right? It's just the, uh, it's just the diehards by now. All right. That's all right. I'll cut, I'll trim off this little extra thread. Okay. Just don't use your good scissors to cut the ends on your wire. Use some snips. These work really good for getting the backs off the buttons too. It's not like a button shank remover. I could push down that wire though, or it's going to be thick. I don't remember how I had this now. <laughs> I think like that maybe? No, I don't think so. So then just fuss with everything, figure out where you want it, and then you can use some hot glue to glue it down. I have great luck with hot glue. The strings, just blast them with a heat tool. I think those snaps were actually sold as scrapbooking, um, as scrapbooking like uh, embellishments. Isn't that funny? Okay, that's really cute. Oh, I kind of like that too. Why not? Why not? It's just a little scrap of it. We can use that up. Gonna have to pay extra postage anyway, so might as well live it up. 
Or maybe I'll hand deliver my Galentine's cards. I don't know. Something nice about getting, getting stuff in the mail, but as long as it arrives, right? <laughs> as long as it actually makes it there. Oh, I think that's really cute. I'm so impressed with myself. <laughs> hey, look at that. I think that's pretty darn cute. All right, so we'll do the inside. Same thing as we did before. And then I'll show you all my finished cards. So yes, you can skip ahead if you don't like that. Um, I also had some, just some random newspaper pocket. I, I think I like the button better. So I'm gonna use the buttons. Maybe this one I won't tear the edges. So you can decide whether you like the torn edges or not. I, think I might need to trim a little bit off that. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, I do. I do need to turn a little bit off the edge of that. For some reason, that card is a little bit, just a touch narrower. I have a finicky um, paper trimmer in the other room. I don't know what happened, but over the years, it's gotten like, um, it's gotten off. So like, I have to mentally remember just to like add one sixteenth of an inch to any measurements and I've tightened all the screws and everything. I just, maybe it's always been off and I've never been very particular, but um, I do notice it with card making. It's like, oh yeah, it's like a 16th of an inch off. But I just wrote it with a Sharpie on it. I wrote add 1 16th of an inch. If that's, uh, if you if you deal with such fine fractions, it's probably always been off, honestly. it's I've had it since the late nineties. I used to use it in my School downtown. We need to trim down art papers. Never needed to be quite that specific, that um, exact. So it was fine. I'm gonna have such a mess to clean up when I'm done, guys. I'm sure you can relate to the crafter math. I do like those little bow tie clips. I might have to get more when I when I go to Joanne's next. I have to go and see. They were in like the dollar section. They weren't well, uh, not really the dollar section because they didn't cost it. They were things weren't a dollar. They were like a dollar forty nine, and they're probably more now because this was probably like over a year ago. But the the section that used to be all the dollar stuff, I think it's now like a little bit more. Not where you cash out, but kind of on an end cap over by the um, where all the paper crafting stuff was. And that's assuming they're selling paper crafting stuff. Um, I noticed I've been hearing, I haven't really made it out to too many. We have like three of the big box chains in our local, in our closest city. Um, but it seems like they've just all been getting rid of paper crafting supplies. So I don't know if I'm going to find any. And that's why we hoard, right? That's why we hoard. We hoard because we can't guarantee we'll be able to find the good stuff. Um... Let's see, let me get the vibe of this card and that's kind of cute. I like the, I like the groups of people. Oh, that's cute too, I like that. So I'm not sure if these are gonna be little, little gifts in there or if I'll stick them to the envelope, one or the other. But, but there we have that one. I think it's very cute. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below, be kind please. Be kind, rewind. <laughs> oh, I probably should clean up. Let me just at least push some stuff out of the way. Look at those romantic movies and the guy would just whoosh, <laughs> brush everything onto the floor and, and then like pick up his lady and give her a big old smooch on the table. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna be that dramatic. I love you guys and all, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not, yeah. I'm not picking up buttons for, you know, 300 years because <laughs> for a drama, drama, uh, drama's sake. Okay, so there's the one we just did. Here's the other one we just did. I think they're lovely. They're all gonna be relatively similar, but we'll get to see all the different pattern people. And this, I mean, oh, I should show you the insides. Okay, I, we just did that. So there's that one and the inside. I did the same, the same decoration on the inside. Get that one. I was able to use that tag that I already had made. I cut down some of these little envelopes to make these little sleeves to make like shorter ones. I use a sticker on that one. This one, I found that, that feather die cut. It was a dollar, no, it wasn't a Dollar Tree one. That was, um, I don't remember, Impression Obsession or I don't know. Uh, might've been Doris for all I know. 
but anyway, it was in it was in a drawer. It, no, a drawer. It was in a bin with something else I was looking for. I think I was looking for my little postage stamp washi tape, and uh, and I'm like, oh, I'll use that. That works. I love the little postage stamp washi tapes, although they don't stick to everything. They'll stick great on vellum, but I find if I'm putting that on um, like a, like this background, I'd have to add glue. Oh, I found some little, um, some little, when I was looking for the clips to put on the inside of the card, I found little coat hangers, little wire coat hangers, which I'm sure you could make with like an artistic jig and a, uh, and some wire, but I'm like, oh, that's cute. And I had so many extra like, like little paper doll clothing from the, um, the stamp like, Oh, where is she? Well, I've already had, I've already showed you. Like her, I had all kinds of extra clothes, so I just hung one up. And I'm like, that's a cute little embellishment. There's a lot going on on this card, like with a thick lace and stuff, but I don't know, I like it. And I put some people in there. I like this green one too. Some of these perfume stickers went great, and some perfume bottles just didn't work. So, and there was just a die cut that I found, found when I was fishing through. These are strips of fabric that I bought these bags of strips of fabric for a dollar. I know, who buys bags of strips of fabric? But they've been so handy on cards, they're so flat, and they just have an interesting texture and pattern. And a lot of times you just want to add a unique texture and pattern to thing to things. This is the same this is the same thing. And this was another washi tape sticker that I came across in my card cart. This was just a leftover when I was stamping out the um the clothing on some of those little pieces of pattern paper. This little motif was there, and so I cut that out and stuck it on top because I thought it worked. A little tag from something else. Um yeah. Oh, I, you know what? I didn't color the, uh, some of these, I colored the little, the cording with a marker. And I didn't do that with the last one that we just made. I don't really think it needs it, actually. I like it white. But you just take a marker and just color over the area you can see. It works really great. So that's ten cards, right? That's ten. And, uh, yeah, it only took us, you know, three and a half years to make them. So, in some Valentine's Day in the future, you too can have cards to send your, your friends, your lady friends, or your gentleman friends. I don't know. Send them to whoever you want. Send them to people who appreciate them, or don't, or, or people that just like to get mail. I don't know. There you go. There's my video, my card making video. I hope you liked it. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. And uh, yeah, I hope you're creating something awesome today too. Most of this stuff is discontinued, guys, so I can't link to it. But if I find some stuff in the same vein, I will link to it uh, to make it a little easier for you to find it. Um, if I can find some pattern people, I love those stamps. If I can find anything similar to that, uh, I'll link that. I know look, I know on Amazon there's a company called Flans. It's an Australian company that has some vintage people, but I think they're small. I don't think they're big. They'd be more like the sticker size. So if you have any, uh, if you want to let me know in the comments below, if you know, have any great resources for good size, like paper doll stamps, that would be great. Um, the paint we used, obviously that's a brand new product, that's still available, and the stickers, the little pattern paper stickers are brand new, so there you have it. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, happy crafting! Bye!